Americans. But what about the market? You know, lots has been talked about whether or not uh, India Inc. is really geared up uh, to make a space for that hole if indeed manufacturing is to move off from China. So let's chat a little bit more about that. And we've got uh, with us head institutional equities at HTFC Securities, Unmesh Sharma joining in, in the show right now. Unmesh, hi, morning and uh, welcome back to television after 11 years. <laughs> Help us understand whether or not India Inc. is really geared up to fill the gap that... Uh, you know, if indeed uh, manufacturing is to move away from China large scale? The government has taken a very strategic initiative in the middle of this crisis. Uh, I, we have always believed that uh, uh, the trend was moving in India's direction in any case. It is just that uh, this crisis has given the opportunity to the government to accelerate that process. Uh, if you look globally, uh, there is a move towards deglobalization, a lot more looking internally, and this is not just India specific. Uh, add to that the problems where there were very serious supply chain disruptions in the short term due to the COVID crisis. Uh, so a lot of uh, the manufacturers globally uh, would like to do two things. One is uh, make their supply chains more secure, which means more diversification. And uh, then there is the geopolitics where uh, at the margin there seems to be a little bit of tension between China and the rest of the world, especially the Western world. So in this, we believe that uh, the government's doing the right thing. Uh, it's also taken advantage of the fact that, you know, our research team has done a fantastic report. They talk about how they, the major inputs to production, land, labor, cost had actually gone haywire in the last decade. All of those have started to correct. And from that perspective, uh, we believe that this whole theme of self-reliance, uh, reduced competition from foreigners in the domestic market, uh, supply chain moves away from China into India, and uh, you know, reduced domestic competition from foreigners is, is, is a big theme for the next three to five years. Sure. Unmesh, um how geared up are individual sectors when it comes to manufacturing per se? The first port of call, of course, is how electronics can be manufactured in India. And we've heard about, you know, murmurs coming in from the likes of Apple, etc. as well. Do you really think India has the potential and companies have the potential uh, to replicate the scale, size and quality that China has to offer as of now? Uh, you know, as you rightly said, this is a very sector-specific uh, uh, response to this. Uh, uh, the first part is that there are certain sectors in which India has a natural advantage. There are certain industries, there are certain uh, uh, engineering skills. For example, if you look at the specialty chemical space, if you look at uh, pharmaceuticals, if you look at auto ancillaries, this is where India has the entrance into the global supply chain and on this we believe that the move will be a lot faster now as far as chemical uh, as far as electronics and some of these others uh, are concerned uh, the supply chain shifts happen a lot longer in fact we have gone into detail in our report where we talk about the fact that this is not something uh, on the newer sectors which is going to happen overnight uh, the infrastructure development the engineering skills the manpower uh, the capex itself the availability of land continue to remain issues while they have eased off, you know, with the moves taken by the government on taxes as well as land prices. Uh, we believe that things will move. Uh, also, the electronic supply chain specifically, uh, you know, while we don't have any stocks which we talk about here, at the same time are extremely complex. So uh, there is not uh, typically, uh, you know, we would be playing in an era where, uh, in a zone where we would be importing raw materials and some goods and then adding value and exporting them back out again. So we believe that that will take a lot longer. However, if you think about, uh, again, going back to my original point, specialty chemicals, pharma, auto ancillaries, and uh, competition in, uh, you know, sectors where we have competition domestically, uh, 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 not just on products, but also on services, we believe we'll be a lot faster to get there. Hmm. Sure. Could be a little more specific, uh, Unmesh, you know, considering specialty chemicals is a very large and varied sector and so is pharmaceuticals, you know, with each and every company having something different to offer. 
which cluster of companies, if you could name some, do stand a chance to benefit from the Atmanirbhar uh, Bharat push? Okay, so uh, our uh, uh, our research team has come out with a few names. Uh, we, uh, you know, some which are under our coverage. Uh, Alphil amines, galaxy surfactants, uh, uh, and followed by uh, Navin fluorine. Uh, these are the ones that uh, we have highlighted in our report are the ones which stand out in the specialty chemicals, agrochemical space. Sure. What about defense? Because, Unmesh, that is also being looked at a big sector where the Atma Nirbhar Bharat push could actually come in. Do you think uh, that as a space and considering there are many listed players as well within that, uh, it does stand to benefit too? Uh, I think uh, that has been in the works. Uh, if you look at the past, uh, uh, we believe since uh, 2014, <laughs> A lot of expectation on our side that things will move a bit faster. Uh, we believe that, uh, however, now it feels like uh, we are going in that direction a lot faster than we were maybe five years ago. Uh, obviously, the one that comes to mind right on top here is LNT, uh, followed by Bharat Forge uh, uh, on uh, uh, on the defense side. Uh, there are other names which we have in the report. However, these are the two which we have in progress and we believe are beneficiaries of the defense team. Fair point. Also wanted to understand uh, what happens to the petro beneficiaries in this case, Unmesh. You know, given um, the kind of fluctuation that we've seen in the last two months in just petrol prices off lay and, and I was just looking at the last... Uh, 10-day data, for instance, and there's been a sizable spike that one has seen in petrol prices and the rebound in crude that has played out as well from the lows. Uh, do you think uh, the oil and gas sector as a, as, as a, as a space as well uh, stands to benefit, if at all? Uh, on the oil and gas space, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, so to some extent, there is a little bit of benefit of deglobalization that uh, the raw material uh, availability in the local market from the refiners actually improves marginally. But at the same time, on the intermediate chemicals, there are also certain uh, uh, certain things in the petrochemical chain which we do import. So the net effect of that at this point in time is a little bit more tricky to gauge. Uh, having said that, uh, on the refining side, you know, India has been uh, so. If you look at the entire macro picture. And you uh, even look at our model portfolio, what you will notice is that India does benefit from the fact that oil prices do come off. Uh, that's uh, great from another perspective, not just Atmanir Bar Bharat. Uh, but that's actually sustainable decline in oil prices is definitely very, very positive for us. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, you know, and uh, the refineries which are adding value uh, to that and creating uh, the finished products are also all, all domestic. So from that perspective, we are positive on the space. However, uh, uh, it's not uh, it's not the biggest beneficiary of Atmanirbhar in our view. Sure, Unmesh, good to chat with you. Thank you so much uh, for joining in after a long, long hiatus of over a decade and uh, sharing with us uh, your takeaways from the Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, report. Uh, that's the word from HDFC Securities. Quick take on the markets. We are